Hong Kong Direct is your weekly racing roundup full of news, views, previews, interviews and special guests and a week on from HKIR. Of course, today we're looking back on those four Group 1s, the big winners as well of the, the Marl, the Sprit, the Cup and the Vars. Christoph Suman, who missed out on last Sunday's action and defending champion of Mar Mars in the Marl. He's back on Sunday. We hear from Christoph, who's been at track work. And Beauty Generation ran for the last time on the weekend. We look back on what a champion he has been over the years. Beauty Generation with many records in the book. Very warm welcome to the show. I'm Andrew Jordan. Please say I'm joined by a special guest who are here to preview the meeting last week to review it as well. Ed Sadler and Graham Cunningham. Graham, a meeting that promised so much. For the most part, I think it delivered. I think it did. And overall, Andrew, it's been a week of perfect symmetry in Hong Kong racing. Uh, in short, we crown a new king in Golden 60 and we salute the old one, Beauty Generation. It was, and we'll talk about those in due course. Uh, the Japanese came again, though, Ed, and they won again, too. Took two of the prizes with them. They did indeed, Andrew. Yes, always a pleasure to be on the show here with you and also Graham. Uh, two wins for Japan, a win for Ireland with Mogul, Golden 60 getting a win for the locals. And what a day it was, too, for Ryan Moore with a double, including a win in the sprint. So he's now completed the full HKR set. Absolutely. And uh, there's another jockey who enjoyed to HKR success. We've put him at the top of the table in another sort of ranking. We'll talk about him in a moment. But let's start off with the mile and uh, Golden 60. Went off long odds, odds on favourite for this, uh, Graham, as they swung into the straight. His turn of foot again was electric. It's absolutely tremendous. And it's not just the finishing 2 300, Andrew. It's the way he rounds them up off the bend. And it's like a, a black hawk swooping on pigeons. And just bear in mind, guys, that the horse is on his inside and the horse in yellow, uh, the Warrior Southern Legend, they're all Group 1 winners in the last year. And he just gathered them up and beat them like a world-class horse, which is exactly what he is now. He isn't that. If there's any doubt before, Ed, there isn't now. But I think credit to Admire Mize and Southern Legend again, he ran a terrific race. What a wonderful horse Southern Legend is running on to finish second there. Of course, he won the Champions Mile earlier this year. He doesn't know how to run a bad race, even though he's now an eight-year-old. Admire Mars kept on well. Uh, Beauty Generation, I know we'll speak more about him, but he was game of defeat. But the winner, Golden 60, now 11 in a row, Andrew. And I can't think of a horse racing at the moment in the world that would be a big threat to him. He beat some of the world's best miles was there and beat them comfortably. He did. So what does the future hold then, Graham, for, for Golden 60 going forward, for the rest of this season anyway? Well, let's look back um, to last weekend. I don't know what you and Edward think, Andrew, but I'm pretty sure he'd have won the sprint had that been his target last week. I'm pretty sure he'd have won the cup over 2,000. We know he stays that distance because of his derby win. And I'm fairly confident he would have beaten Mogul and company in the Vars. So his horizons are very broad indeed. And look at his performances on the clock. Look right back to his first ever win, his debut win, March 31st, 2019. He came home in a, in a very fast closing sectional. That marked him out as a horse to follow. I never thought he'd win 14 from 15, but he's not just a miler. We know he's, he's tremendously fast. Look at him on the clock again uh, last weekend. He ran really fast through the middle section, much faster than ever before over a mile, and he still came home in 22.05, clearly the fastest closing split of the day. It's the eye test that he passes, it's the time test uh, that he passes, it's hard to find a flaw in him at the moment. It certainly is, yeah, his uh, domestic rating now at of uh, 130 plus puts him rare company here. The Longjean World Rankings come out mid-January, but I expect to see a, a new entry high up that uh, order when they do. Yes, he's certainly the best horse that we have here in Hong Kong, Golden 60, and such an exciting horse for us to have in this jurisdiction. As for the future with him, I'd imagine we'll see him next in the Stewards' Cup towards the end of January. I get the feeling from what I've read from Connections that they don't want to come back in trip from a mile, so that opens up the prospect. Do we see him take on a horse like Exalt in a Gold Cup or even a QE2 later on this season? Yeah, he really does have the world at his feet. That's Golden 60. I mean, to keep moving, though, we'll get into the, the sprint next, uh, Graham. And... Uh, this looked open on paper, so it proved as well. A blanket finish, a classic legend, big talking horse coming into this hot king prawn as well. But it was Dan on smash and Ryan Moore. Yeah, I'll throw this to Edward very quickly. Uh, I think Ryan Moore was the key component here from stall 14. The first time he'd ridden this horse, you touched on the fact that it, it was widely open once classic legend disappointed. And Edward, seven horses past the post in a quarter of a second. That's where a world-class rider makes a major difference. It was an incredible ride from Ryan Moore because he jumped from barrier 14 as Andrew said but within a couple of hundred meters he hit him midfield one off the fence superb bit of riding uh, from him i do worry from a hong kong point of view of what it says about our sprinters as gavin 
as horses like Jolly Banner Rat and, and Wishful Thinker have been. They're older horses, yet they finished second, third and fourth. I think it was a complete forgive run for Classic Legend, given the issues with the preparation that he had, and then he missed the start and he's pulled up lame after the race. But Dan on Smash, beautiful ride, right place, right time. He was too good for them on the day. Yeah, and Ryan Moore took uh, two of the group ones. Just another quick word then, Graham, on Classic Legends. Uh, back to the drawing board. They can take their time now and rebuild for the, for the end of the season. I think so. Uh, plenty of horses have disappointments along the way and bounce back. So let's hope he does as well. It, it, was a, it was a torrid run for him. He missed the break slightly. He got barged around early on, came back slightly lame. It was a very unusual preparation for that horse. So it's, it's pretty much a forgive run, I think. All right. So it's a classic uh, legend. But Daniel Smith winning that race before that. Ryan Moore had won the first uh, Group 1 of the afternoon. Uh, Ed, that was the, the Vars uh, beating local favourite, Exultant. That's right, Ryan gave him a terrific ride here as well too. Um, coming with his run at the right time, Exultant led and was just a, a little bit keen. Uh, Mogul drew away for an authoritative win. It sounds like he could be headed on a, a similar sort of path to a Highland rear, um, Graham. After the race, Ryan Moore said he feels or looks similar to him to Dylan Thomas, but potentially we could see a globetrotter for Barry Durr in 2021 here with Mogul. Yeah, he looked really good beating Exultant. Exultant has dipped a little bit. Columbus County is very progressive. That race lacked a little bit of depth overall. Really surprising there wasn't a Japanese contender in it and only the one serious challenger in the race from Europe. So it was a great opportunity for Mogul. He seized it with both hands. Every chance he'll be uh, on the plane again and perhaps back here next December. Yeah, and it's always been very highly regarded, uh, Mogul. Now two Group 1s uh, to his name. Columbus County, though, Ed, interesting. Now could he be a horse that could challenge Exultant down the track as well? I certainly think he could. He wasn't far off Exultant there. He got to the line strongly. And listening to what Cass found his trainer has to say about the horse the horse will be even better in the next six to eight months so when we get towards the end of the season and the champions in Chater Cup the other group won over 2400 meters that we have which is generally purely contested by local stays I think Columbus County could be right in calculations for a race like that yeah, certainly not riding off exultant just uh, yet though he still sets the sand standard as far as the the middle distance and staying ranks are concerned on to the cup then the 2000 meters 28 million dollars uh, on the table this was another one to Japan Graham with uh, Nomcore what about Winbright though again almost went out on a high yeah, he goes to stud now with a tremendous charting record. Two Group 1s and a Group 1 second, uh, but another grey shadow on the outside. Norm Core, disappointing the time before, but bounced right back. Again, I have to think Jockey Bookings played a big part here. We knew she was good, Norm Core, but she never looked quite this good until Zach Purton got aboard for the first time, Edward. No, that's uh, right. Zach gave her a terrific ride. It shows to what a tough mare she is because she had a tough run in the QE2 Cup where she went out at a really strong tempo over a trip that was probably a bit too far for her. Then to travel to Hong Kong and win like that was really, really game of her. Nice way for Winbright to uh, go out there. Not quite the result, but still just shows what a great record he's got in Hong Kong. The internationals were to the fourth. You're already best of the locals uh, finishing in fifth. Now that win for Zach Purton, unexpected uh, rides. Christoph Sumian should have been in the sale, but that win, Graham, meant or means he's now the most successful jockey in HKIR history. Yeah, I've said it several times. Zach Purton keeps a very beady eye on records, and, and this is one that he'll be particularly proud of. To go ahead of Mosse, look at Ryan Moore coming up on the blind side. Two winners uh, last week puts him on seven at a very healthy strike rate. And it's rude to talk about money, we know that, but I'll make an exception in this case. Uh, I did the data the other day for two wins in two places last Sunday in the space of a couple of hours in IR races. Uh, Ryan Moore and connections the best part of three million pounds sterling which is a little bit more than all his 500 and something mounts in Europe earned throughout the season. It's not a bad number is it? Uh, there you go. It was a fantastic day on Sunday there with a big uh, winner. Still plenty more to talk about though um, after the break including we catch up with Christoph Sumio. Welcome back to Hong Kong Direct. We've got a tribute to Beauty Generation coming up shortly and an interview with Christoph Suman, Graham Cunningham, and Ed Sadler, my special guest, still with us. Don't forget, though, on the website, hkjc.com, head to the Multimedia Showcase and you'll find a full preview there at about 6 o'clock on Saturday night for Sunday's 10 race programme at Sha Tin. Two races on the all weather as well. Christoph Suman, though, unfortunately missed last weekend's uh, meeting and missed the winning ride on Nomcore as well. The 10 time champion jockey from France, though, is back for a short stint here in Hong Kong through to February. 
It's had over 100 wins already here in Hong Kong, including Group 1 wins and HKR wins on Good Bar Bar and Admire Mars in last year's mile. Ed Sadler was out at track work this week to catch up with Christoph. Well, Christoph, it's good to see you riding here now in Hong Kong after all that's been going on in the last few weeks. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, yeah, I'm really happy to to get out of that bubble. Uh, finally, I can uh, do what I really love every day, riding horses and compete with all the jockeys. So yeah, I'm very excited to be on race day on Sunday. And my feelings yesterday and this morning are very good. So I'm fit and well ready to go. Let's get the bad news out of the way before we get to the good stuff. Um, last Sunday, watching Norm Core and Lucky Patch win, what was that like for you? Um, I knew they're going to run well, probably win. Uh, I was ready to see even Admire Mars fighting a bit with uh, Nolan 60, but uh, this didn't happen. But anyway, I came here to try my best. Uh, I knew I have some good rides. Um, last Wednesday in Happy Valley, I lost five winners. So same. I knew I have good rides. Uh, I'm coming here to compete and trying to do my best. Unfortunately, the rules are the rules. Um, I get positively tested in uh, the US. I already lost this year Breeders' Cups. Uh, I could win the French Derby, I couldn't win the Arc, I couldn't win many big races, and I couldn't be on the horse on the right time. Uh, sometimes because uh, we didn't take the greatest de decision, and sometimes because, yeah, you get uh, the COVID-19. So. Like I said, uh, I'm happy to be there. Uh, there were some other people who are very sick and uh, couldn't get back well after getting the disease. So it doesn't matter. It's just uh, winning uh, at the end, still racing. For sure, there is big prize money for some. But anyway, uh, I work hard enough uh, to know that if I keep going like, like this, I will find some other big winners in the future. So it doesn't matter that yeah, I lost something, but I learned also different things. So. It's going to make me stronger at the end of the day. Have all of those um, setbacks, those lost opportunities, tested you this year? Um, I don't know exactly uh, what's going to happen now, but for sure I'm going to go through all these, these things. Hopefully uh, I'm going to get some good uh, rides and very good horses to ride. So that's the target at the end. But uh, yeah, I just want to go, go back riding races, going back to the winning circle and yeah doing what I, uh, I do the best, trying to be uh, on the top. So you start off your stint then this Sunday. What's your preparation been like to get your head around the form and the horses here in Hong Kong? To make yeah, the, actually the, 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 the good way was that uh, because I was locked up for more than two weeks now, uh, nearly three, uh, I had the time to look the races properly and uh, analyse every horse's track walk and the way they're improving or not. So it was quite good because, like I said, when I came, my first two races, they are fully booked. Uh, it's the same thing until the 1st of January right now. So I feel a lot of good support, uh, support from the owners and trainers. Um, let's just hope now, uh, yeah, uh, the luck will come back and uh, I will be able to do my job uh, again like I did before. A philosophical Christoph Seaman, I think, uh, Graham, probably the best way to describe it um, there, but he's one of the biggest names in world racing and great to have him back on the roster here in Hong Kong. It is. It's rude to talk about money, Andrew, but I'll make an exception <laughs> again. He's probably been, he's probably left about the best part of four million Hong Kong dollars on the table because of um, the recent um, traumas. But the good thing about Christoph, as you could see from a really good interview with Edward, he's been in the racing bubble for over a month but he can see outside it and he knows that the health of the industry is paramount overall, that the precautions taken have been justifiable and now he can get on with his job. So good on him. He's got plenty of more good years ahead of him and a few good weeks in Hong Kong that could offer something really significant. Yeah, he's only here Ed, until um, middle of February, but um, he can definitely make a splash between now and then. He already has in his time in Hong Kong in the past, Andrew, with big wins on horses like Good Bar Bar, Viva Pataka, Bullish Luck. And I know it says that he's licensed until the middle of February, but you would imagine that if he were to pick up a good derby ride, um, he might even try to prolong that stay into March to win another Hong Kong derby. Um, it hasn't been a great 2020 for him, as we all know, so he'll be wanting 2021 to come around very quickly. He certainly will, as will most of us, I should think. Uh, now, on to Beauty Generation. I'm sure you caught up with the news that uh, he retired after that mighty effort uh, in the Longji in Hong Kong last weekend. Couldn't 
quite recapture his crown. But a two-time winner on International Day, a two-time Horse of the Year as well, and the holder of the most amount of money ever won here in Hong Kong at over $106 million. He bows out as a champion here of Hong Kong racing. purring like a kitten early, roaring like a lion now. Singapore Sling's trying to get him down. Beauty Generation hanging on, and he'll take the Sha Tin Trophy. In. You know, what he did was amazing. The ride he took me on, it was phenomenal uh, to go to the races. I walk over to the races knowing I had him to ride that day. It was a great feeling. It obviously put a spring in my step. And the one I enjoyed the most was the International Mile in 2018. He drew wide, they made him work. Um, it was a strong field, basically demolished the field like he did. It was a phenomenal performance and it's one that really sticks out in my mind. This is 100% pure Group 1 power. Beauty Generation 5 in front, Biblos and Southern Legend. He is invincible, Beauty Generation. What a champion he's going to be. I think his ability to be able to run the opposition into the ground, get out there and carve out those solid sectionals and keep the gallop up. Those horses that were struggling to keep up with the pace of the race then had to try and find something to run him down. It was very hard to do, to do that. Purton sitting motionless, three in front on Beauty Generation. What a remarkable season it's been. Another incredible racing story. A second champion's mile and a coveted crowning glory. It took 17 years for him to come along for me. There's certainly few and far between. But I did enjoy it and I got to enjoy it, I think, because of the racing style he had and just the confidence that I had in him. Uh, I wasn't worried about the feet and for that, that reason I was able to go there and lap it up uh, as he did and just let him do the rest. He'll head back to living legends in Australia now, Graham. The stats are one thing, but um, the horse himself was, was quite something else. And amazing, I think, for all three of us uh, to be present for some of those big uh, victories at Shartin as well. Absolutely, Andrew. And if Golden 60, Natural Brilliance is Federer, then Beauty Generation was brute strength and awesome efficiency. Rafa Nadal, he was an awesome sight to watch. Uh, and I agree with Zach Purton, that 2018 mile and the race that preceded it when he broke the track record in the Jockey Club mile, that was him at his absolute peak of the pinnacle. He was sensational at that point. And Golden 60 is coming for his stuff, no question about it. But just to equal Beauty Generation's record, he needs, I think, four more wins. He needs seven more Group 1s. He needs a couple of Horse of the Year titles. He needs another $50 million. He needs to be named world's highest rated specialist miler, not once, but twice. So he's coming for his stuff, but he's still got a way to go. He certainly does. The turning point for me, Ed, was that first Celebration Cup when he came come out of his four-year-old series, and he won that, and then won the Chartin Trophy, then Derek rode him to, to win an international day. I thought, hang on a second, this is a, this is a serious horse. That's right, Andrew. Yes, he came through that terrific derby crop that we had in 2017 where he was beaten by Rapid Dragon and Pakistan Star, but we know what great horses they were. And then he came into that next season and I think he surprised us with that first Group 3 win and then he won a Group 2 and then won the Hong Kong Mile. And each time we thought, is he going to do it again? Can he get his own way out in front again? But he kept on defying all of us until we all genuinely believed what a champion he was. He proved that that season, the following season, and I think it's testament to his durability that he then could still win group ones like last season at the age of seven. Yeah, and that atmosphere was absolutely incredible when Derek won that first uh, mile as well on International Day. Of course, there's been lots of tributes on social media as well. Zach Perm, we just heard from Zach. This was uh, him on, um, on Instagram, Graham, and uh, he pretty much says here, it's hard to put it into words and, um, you know, sum it up in, in just one page, but uh, he really has been a horse that's um, sort of, at this point for Zach Purton, is a horse of a lifetime, I suppose. Yeah, that's a terrific picture and a really, really eloquent tribute from Purton. And he, he often picks just the right word in his quotes. And two that stand out from this week, he said, when he was on his game, he said, it was brutal. Uh, and there was this real brutal power about the way he dismantled good quality horses. And that he used to go to the races uh, feeling that the horse was invincible because for a time there he was he was he was head and shoulders above the best in town and the best that came from elsewhere 
Yeah, and the beauty stable as well. It uh, broke the news um, on Twitter, um, and um, I didn't see the final count, but there was a lot of likes and a lot of retweets and comments that went with it. There were. He's a horse that um, people wanted to watch Hong Kong racing because of him, wherever they were, right around the world. And it's great to see, Andrew, that he's going to go to a terrific home in Living Legends. I've been fortunate enough to spend a bit of time there, and there's a lot of other greats of Hong Kong racing there too, like California Memory, Bullish Luck, Silent Witness. So we won't be the only former Hong Kong horse uh, near Melbourne. Melbourne Airport for his new home. And there he is, uh, just back in the early days, Graham as well, beauty generation. Who could have predicted that from that uh, that photo when he was a foal? Absolutely, Hyde Park, that is. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a great example of of the best of Hong Kong racing. That horses have to earn the way to the top, then they have to work hard to stay there, and then most Hong Kong stars go out not on a low note, but time. Uh, gets the better of them in the end because there's no stud value to protect. They have to keep proving themselves time in, time out. And I'll go back to what I said right at the top of the show, an absolute perfect symmetry to crown a new king on the same day as the old king is retired. Absolutely. And there's the final one as well from Longines, Will Best Racehorse as well. A, a table he did top at one point in time. That's Beauty Generation. Not done with him yet. We're going to finish the show with another classic uh, of his. But uh, looking forward uh, now. Sunday again at Chartin, mixed program there. Last race, class two is a good one. Happy Valley again Wednesday night. That's the pre-Christmas cracker. And then Boxing Day back again at Chartin. But that is just about it, guys. Graham, as always, thank you for your help this week and all the work last week. And um, Ed, you're going to build us into this, uh, this replay we'll finish with. Yes, we saw a few of... Uh Beauty Generation's memorable Group 1 triumphs in that package that was put together. But I've picked out his 2018 Queen Silver Jubilee Cup win. It's over 1,400 metres, so you get the sprinters like Beat the Clock, who was the premier sprinter at that time, stepping up in trip. Beauty Generation coming back in trip. He was there to be beaten, Beauty Generation, but he fought back off the canvas to score. OK, so two giants of Hong Kong racing have retired recently, Beat the Clock and a Beauty Generation. Enjoy this, and we'll see you again on Sunday. Bring all the action from Hong Kong direct to you. They swing for home and Beauty Generation lays down the law to Penophobia. 50-50 and beat the clock, winding together. Wider out is Pingwu, Sparker Lane, Paragon, Giant Treasure. Beauty Generation's got a strong kick. 50-50, beat the clock nearer the inside. Then Pingwu, Sparker Lane, Paragon. Beauty Generation tiring, beat the clock running through underneath him. Then 50-50, Beauty Generation will not surrender. He fights on strongly and Beauty Generation from beat the clock and 50-50. Thank you.